Hey guys, welcome back to Prepping in Progress. I'm Steve. And I'm Kim. And today you wanted to talk about... Well, we're going to be going through 10 non-inclusive mistakes, just 10 that we've thought about today. Items to prep that are kind of unusual, that don't have to deal with food, or bullets, band-aids. <laughs> the basic bees that we usually go over. So I was just going to throw out 10 everyday items that you may want to think about stockpiling or just having them set aside for your bug application. So let's get into it. Stay with us. First on our list, safety goggles. Mine are way cooler than yours, by the way. <laughs> Alright guys, I wear safety goggles at work every day um, for a good reason to wear safety goggles at work every single day. It's metal chips flying everywhere. It's the same thing as if you're going to be in any kind of scenario, whether that is just a tornado or you're having to clean debris from your front yard from a you know, natural disaster or something that's come down or something having to chop wood or whatever. A lot of people don't think to make sure that they wear safety goggles. But you as a paramedic, how bad is it to... You do not want to get bodily fluids within any open orifice or area that fluids can be absorbed. What about wood chips? How dangerous are they to the eyeballs? Very. Um, so you know, metal or... Metal. Grinding you know, and even the person who is weed eating and starts getting grass in the eye, it can be very discomforting. Or Did it lead to any kind of like infections or anything like that in the eye? It, it can be rare, um, just because most times your tear ducts will wash it out, mm -hmm. but you need to be careful, get all that out. Um, with the way what you do, mm -hmm. your metal shavings can end up being microscopic. Yeah and you would never know and it could get in and fester. The other problem with some with a job like yours is if you were to have an MRI, the magnet magnet could actually pull those metal, that metal out of your eyes. It could blind you or ruin the machine and then you get to pay for a <laughs> fifty thousand dollar machine. I don't want to do that. Yeah. But that's in good times, so in bad times, to say safety goggles to me, like I said, because they are a requirement at my work, I've had plenty of times where I've had stuff fly at my face, and he comes home and he sees me, or I come home and he sees me, i, I got stuff all over me usually. And so these are what I'm used to wearing on a daily basis. And so I get really used to them, so I'm a big proponent of making sure you have safety goggles. If you wear glasses, they make safety goggles that can go on top of your uh, glasses, please make sure even with glasses, they don't sit as snug on your face as safety goggles do, and things can kind of bounce and try to get underneath your eye if you're wearing regular glasses. If you have regular glasses, uh, you can even get side shields yeah. to put on your glasses uh, if you don't feel comfortable wearing the ones that go over on top of it. But protect your eyeballs, you're going to need them. So. Well, I remember too that when we were working, uh, Adam put out a call for. The, the flood victims mm -hmm. and the dust and debris that was being thrown up inside those houses. Yeah. You know, safety goggles were a big thing. I wasn't wearing them. When we were working in Muskogee. And, and, yeah. Yeah, when we were working in Muskogee, uh, helping rub out the lady's house, you know, we were like dealing with overhead, putting up sheetrock, things were falling down. It, it was going to get in your eyes. And so we tried to make sure we brought safety goggles along with us. So they were definitely. A must-have. Must-have. All right. On to the next. What's next? All right, guys. Number two on our list. Shoelaces. They tend to break. <laughs> uh, we picked these up at uh, a certain superstore today. And mainly because we got these are for Steve's hiking boots. And these are for just regular tennis shoe ones. But, you know, everybody's saying, oh, I'll just use paracord. I'll use that. It's not always easy to use paracord, um, the little tips on the ends of them have burned and maybe not fit, or I don't want to waste my paracord on my shoelaces. Now if I'm in a bug out scenario and I don't have this with me, I can use paracord, yes. But is it 
what I want to use. No, so we're going to go put these up at the, the bug out location so we have extras. And we're not running around with our shoes flopping off everywhere. There you go. <laughs> but we're going to try to get some for all of our major shoes, our tennis shoes, and all of our work boots. So, shoelaces, stockpile. Oh, I'll have to do like a bunch of them, but just get replacements for all your shoes. Sounds good. And number three on our list, manual can openers. Multiple. Yeah. Multiple. <laughs> Yeah, there's a meme floating around on the preparedness pages on Facebook where the husband and wife are down in the bunker and, you know, off in the distance there's the balloon going up and she's and the, there are cans all over the bunker and she said, now how many times, Harold, did I tell you to put a can opener in here? <laughs> That's a fair, no hard lady way to get to it. Yeah. It just, yes, there are the little small, uh, what are they? The P38s. P38 can openers. Which I love, and I, I'm faster with one of those than one of these. I'm not. I'm, I'm terrible with them, and to me, it's, it's just easier to have one of these on hand, ready to go. Uh, definitely not going to go in my bug out bag. The little P30 thing is going to go into my bug out bag, which it is, but for the bug out location or even having some extras here, having a manual can opener. So I know a lot of people have switched over to just having the electric can openers in their yeah. house. So, but having a manual one just to get lights are out, power outages and things like that, you just want to go down and open a can of chili, make sure you have a manual can opener. Yep. All right, another one is pest control. Uh, we're actually stocking up on things like mothballs, mouse traps, and these are actually really good for moths as well. They're little cedar bags. Cedar bags. And so if you have a cedar tree, go ahead and go for it. We don't have a cedar tree, but... Here. Here. We have several up at the cabin. Gotcha. I didn't know that. Yes. Awesome. And then I have some that are similar to cedars up there. I didn't know I have actual cedar. That's cedar. Awesome. And this smells great. Smell. So I love the smell of cedar. So if you don't like the smell of mothballs, the, the cedar ones can do as well. There's also some different essential oils that your mom knows of yes. that uh, keep moths and pests away. But at our bug out location cabin, we had a real bad problem with pantry moths. And we have you yeah. got here. They are a pest and they get into everything. Uh, so your mom had a really cool way of putting these out so they're not just scattered everywhere. Tell me well, she took a little glass jar and poked holes in the lid. It's a baby put, food jar, right? Baby food jar. Baby so, food jars. Maybe. They, they were small jars. And she put a, just a few. And then she put one by each door and one by the windows. Particularly, I've got all the words. <laughs> Particularly the ones where we have the window mounted air conditioning units. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, buggies and whatnot like to come through the gaps in the on either side of the air conditioner. So we put those out and, you know, the pest problem has been prevented. Definitely. Your cat's sneezing. Pest problem. Get rid of that. All the different kinds of scissors. We're going to talk skizzers. <laughs> they were, are we on number five? I believe so. Okay. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, four... Five. Number five, scissors. A multitude of different kinds of scissors. Now, I'm sure everybody has scissors in their home. They're thinking, well, I have scissors. You maybe have like one pair like stuck in a drawer somewhere that you're like, yeah, sure, we've got scissors. Or the guys are going, well, I use one pair, whatever pair I can find. Pretty much, you know. Fabric scissors, hair cutting scissors to just everyday use scissors to opening up bags and things like that having different kinds set aside for their multiple uses and having backups to those. Like I said, if you're having to do repairs on things like that clothing, having a good pair of fabric scissors are definitely better than trying to use hair clipping scissors as fabric scissors, right? Or vice versa. Look, gentlemen, these are the good times. These are the wonderful times. Allow me to explain something. Happy wife, happy life. If you use her fabric scissors on your hair, on the piece of paper you need to cut, opening a bag, opening a, bag, opening a box, gentlemen,
the stink will hit the air circulation device. The end of the world as we know it will come, and it will be in the form of your beautiful bride. <laughs> so, listen to me. Different kinds of scissors for different kinds of operations. These are the blue handled fabric scissors. They also make orange handled fabric scissors. Do not do it. Ask me how I know. <laughs> On the next. Number six is kind of along the same lines uh, as we were talking about with the scissors. This is not a tackle box. It is not a tool box. This is my sewing kit. It was way easier to put everything into a little tool box. But we've got a little bit of everything in here. Now allow me to throw these out because I love these things. Oh yeah, we found these. I can't even find them anymore, so if y'all do, let me it's know. A, it's a garage sale kit that we found. You have a button that can pop off, black fabric, and your needle. And it's got a little cutting thing to cut your, your thread that yeah. comes with the thread. The, bl the blade's right here on the inside. Love these things. If you ever find a place to get them in bulk, get them in bulk. Yeah, we throw them in our bug out bag to uh, prepare anything on the go. But we also keep them around for just quick little, it's already threaded. It's good to go. It's really great for quick fixes. But having lots of different types of needles, this one's for like really hard denim, uh, extra buttons, things like that. Lots of different kinds of thread. But having a good sewing kit because you're not going to just be able to go buy something to replace something that gets torn or ripped, whether it's a shirt, your socks, jeans, to your bug out bag, to whatever it may be, have a well stocked sewing kit. And if you can, have some extra fabric, different kinds of fabric, whether it's t-shirt material, extra jean materials that you can make patches out of if you're needing to repair because we don't know how long it may last and you may be on your last pair of jeans and they're not holding up so well because you're working through them. Make sure you have a way to repair old to make it so you can keep using it. Look guys, we're already cutting up jeans to make char cloth, right? Well, if we take a little bit of that material, cut it out into patches, set it aside when she needs a patch for denim, She's happy, we're happy, life is good. <laughs> but sewing kits, definitely make, you, make sure you have a well stop sewing kit. This is true. Okay, next. Number seven, work gloves. Now, I love these. These are my winter work gloves. They're lined, they're leather. I can grab barbed wire with these. And, oh, these have been a lifesaver throughout my time. These are some cheap ones that I get for mostly for gardening, pulling weeds, and just doing manual labor yeah. around the house. Look, guys, you know, especially, you know, whether it is a flood, a natural disaster of some kind, and you've got to dig through a house to find someone or just move stuff out of the way, um, they were really, they really came in handy. That camping trip we had out by the lake that. Mm -hmm the storm came in and blew yeah. trees across the road we couldn't get out. <laughs> Wonderful camping trip, I know. Yeah. Um, but having a set of work gloves, we were able to mm -hmm. move all, all the woods and not get splinters and whatnot. Um, or blisters. Blisters are really bad without wearing them. And when and if the bad things really come, with some spare bar wire, you can restring your fences, you can do lots of the outside work, the building, the manufacturing with these. Definitely. And even just light labor, like I said, gardening and things like that, having some gardening gloves even. Just gloves in general to help protect your hands from splinters and things like that, or even just like just like blisters or anything that's going to wreak havoc on your hands because it's what you're going to be using on a daily basis. Most of the time, you know, right now we're so used to machinery doing everything for us. In an SHTF situation, you're going to be mostly doing everything by hand. You might have to use more hand tools than you're used to. Uh, manual screwdrivers, you know, I've seen those a lot of people stockpile in. Those things tear up your hands. <laughs> I know I wear them at work all the time just because I'm using tools all the time. 
but having some to protect your hand so you can keep using your hand without them being so sore with blisters and splinters and everything else in them, then or cutting them up. These are really good, nice leather ones so you don't accidentally cut your hands. They're not cut proof, but for nicks and things like that, you're not completely just slicing and dicing your hands. Yes. So, gloves must have. Must have. Number eight. Aluminium foil. Or as we in the States call it, aluminum. Aluminium. Aluminum. Aluminium. Read it. Al U Minium. Aluminum. <laughs> Anyways, definitely a must have on my list of things that I stockpile is aluminum. More than just um, for cooking and things like that. Though I do use it for cooking. Um, it's actually, I can uh, use it, I wad it up and help me scrub out uh, my cast iron pans and things like that. It really does help. But cooking is probably the main reason I use aluminum. You can actually do lots of like little campfire cookouts and things like that, wrapping up potatoes or little, there's lots of great uh, recipes out there for aluminum foil meals that you can just kind of wrap them up, throw them straight onto the fire. But uh, having a lot of this, being able just to line a grill or a line of pants, you're not having to scrub them out and just throw them in foil and toss it. Or reuse it. I don't know. <laughs> it makes great hats, too. It, yes, we it, must wear a tinfoil aluminum hat. It keeps, you know. The, the aliens from reading our brains. That's right. right. And the government. And the government from and reading our brain. Speaking <laughs> of which. We should have told them. We will, we will know by the time this video goes up. The massacre of how Area 51. The, how, the, how the raid slash massacre of Area 51 went. They weren't wearing their aluminum hats. But they did their run. <laughs> Number nine. You guys, you're not going to always want to use your knife on just home maintenance and home repairs. Number nine on our list is utility plates. And a whole bunch of replacements. Yeah, see, you got a nice pretty knife like that. You don't want to be cutting like sheetrock and things like that out of, and tearing up your gorgeous knife and doling it down with different things. This is true. It is much easier to just get some utility blades. I, we found this huge thing of replacement blades. Yep. So we can just be able to pop one of those out as needed. There's 50 of them in here, so we're just going to go put this back. And having lots of extra, we got these blades, we've got ones that we carry around with us as well. But we're going to put these back as extras in the stockpile. Backups to backups. Back Two is one, one is none. That's right. And like I said, you know, most people are thinking, well, I have blades. I have things like that. But I don't want y'all dulling your good everyday carry blades on mundane stuff. Yeah. It's, it's just going to be a lot more having to deal with sharpening your blades and making sure those are kept up when it's much easier to use something like this for different repair stuff around the house. Um, just basic things that you would use just to cut things open, like I said, cutting into uh, cheap rock or whatever it may be. Yeah. Use one of these. Don't tear up your good blades or dull down your good blades because they would be needed. EDC up. blades are not utility blades. No. Use utility blades for utility things. They're not expensive. You can buy, I said, an absolute ton of replacement blades for them. One goes dull, toss it, grab another one, and you can keep working. You're not having to constantly sharpen your knife. Yep. So. Next. Next. All right, guys. Number ten. Last but not least, extra screws and nails. There are going to be repairs that need to be done. Uh, we got this bucket. It's a bunch of different sizes and things like that. Um, everybody's like, "Well, you won't be able to use your drill, or you don't know. You don't know what I got. What I got? You know." Okay. <laughs> Um, but even just having some extra nails, um, that way you can just use your hammer and be done with it. But having the ways to repair, maybe boarding up windows or building, uh, repairing fences, a number of different things that you may need extra screws, extra nails, things like that for. So I would definitely see about stockpiling some, putting some back, different, different sizes, different kinds, whatever, because you never know what you might need them for. And so, 
we're putting some back as we speak. Like I said, this one's a bunch of different sizes in there. And we just have tons that we've gotten. Or we've got a project, we've got a bunch left over, and we'll put them back. And so we don't just toss them or throw them in a bucket and forget about them. And, but no, we just collect them up and set them aside, and you never know what you might need them for. So even if it's, like I said, even if you're not going out and just buying a big old thing of them, if you have extras left over from a project, maybe find an old coffee can or some way of to divide them up into different sizes. But keep a hold of them because you never know what you may need to work on. Hold on to nails and screws because you can't always carry a blacksmith with you. <laughs> They're heavy. <laughs> what? I have a blacksmith who can make nails and screws, mm -hmm. but he's pretty heavy. He is heavy. All right, guys, this is an, an all-inclusive list. It's not even a top ten list or anything like that. It was ten items that we had thought about and wanted to share with you guys to get your brains working about things outside of the beans, bullets, band-aids. So if any of these helped, let us know. If you can think of any more, we may do another list just as we think of things. We may keep a running list and talk about other things that we may be stockpiling in the future. If you'd like to see that, let me know. So I think that's it. We're going to be wrapping it up. Uh, we've got to do some driving tomorrow, so we might just uh, brainstorm another list for you. Probably. We just keep the list coming. It's just prep our list like crazy. There you go. <laughs> but it's, never go it's good. Like I said, this is stuff that we're already trying to stockpile. And so, and it doesn't have to be large stockpiles. Like I said, a couple extra can openers is not going to break the bank. So try putting back maybe a few of the items as you go along, and that way you're not making your wife go crazy because you're using your fabric scissors. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> well, Alright guys, thank y'all so much for joining us and I hope that y'all, if you liked it, you like, share, subscribe, maybe watch some other videos that may be playing somewhere around my face. <laughs> I'm going to put one right, right here. <laughs> Alright guys, y'all have a great day and we'll see y'all later.